Hi, welcome to the Commercial Gas Engineer channel. Apologies for the delay in making a video. I have been at an electrical course the last two weeks. So this was me doing metal fabrication. So for my store wired armor cable, SWA, that's what I had to make. So a lot of cutting and bending, having to do little grooves. Let me know if you've done any of this. So this was part of the training. And then a lid for my box to run my singles cables through. The lid was the hardest bit for me. You see the cuts there you have to put in it. Quite tricky. I must have made several attempts in order to do that. So I've got some cables going in here into my sockets some singles and I've got a running coupler up there which we had to practice and then my consumer unit now on this side have a socket a ring circuit there the sockets down here so at this particular site they had no central heating so I was checking the temporary boiler, making sure it was running, and it was. So we had a problem with the flow. So straight away I had to trace to see why the heat wasn't getting around the building. So I went to the control panel and looked for the Billy Basics. Looked to see if there was any restrictions. Look at that pressure, is that correct? 9.9? .9? I was checking the temperature with my gauge then, it was saying 66.5 on the flow. These are the old boilers, you can see them here, they were they're finished. And then outside, now I'm gonna have a look at the pressurization unit again. Then outside I'm checking out my temperature on my flow and I've got approximately 63.5 and rising, but I think it was warmer than that. Do you think it was warmer? Don't think that was the real temperature. Gonna check the BMS in a moment to see what we get. You can see the boilers are pluming away there. Here's the pipe work. EPDM, I believe it is. So this is the flow temperature on the inside, but also I think this wasn't 50 Celsius. I believe it was more than that. And then this is the return temperature, 50 Celsius also. So here now on the BMS, let's go into it. So graphs, hopefully this is still online. Let's add, add a graph. Let's see, we want to check. So I've got my boiler flow and return. Okay, you can see our flow and return there on the chart together. And it recently went up. So in another plant room, that, that main plant room was serving, I could see that the temperatures are very low and it looks as though the actuators also are off. Look, you can see the saturator is closed. Looks like the BMS isn't telling the system to come on. So if the actuators are closed because the BMS is not telling them to open, regardless of having that temporary boiler on, they're not going to get any heat. So I was just winding my actuators down, but I think that unless it's unplugged, they're probably going to work their way back. So I just wanted to see whilst winding it through if it was what kind of difference I was going to see in temperature. And I'll do some wiring in a moment. So I wasn't getting a huge difference in temperature, but the actuator didn't give me a chance. I found another actuator. This one was a bit more friendly with me. I, I inverted it, so made it do the opposite to what it was being told. And there were two of them, and then they started to work their way around and open for me. I'm going to leave a note on these. It's good practice to leave a note if you tamper with actuators. 
so that you can let whoever comes after you know what you've done so there's no big confusion it's working its way around i'm looking to see if there are any more restrictions it's nice someone put a sign on there saying open is up closed is at nine o'clock is Ralph isn't in any hurry to open up but it's okay so long as it's opening I can feel the heat going through so if you do put temporary boilers in somewhere do ensure that the actuators are opening otherwise it's just going to go around the constant temperature circuit and not the variable temperature circuit so I'm checking the chlorophyll which is quite cold only at 30 celsius don't know what's going on with this i don't know if this has always been like this but i've been trying to you see someone's put a sign there saying heat back to the bms panel so i'm looking on here to see my flows again and i noticed they dropped finally they dropped down when i arrived but sometimes that isn't always a bad thing that could be because you're opening up actuators and letting the heat go somewhere so you can get a drop in temperature Sometimes there's a blend in the temperature in the system. And I'm trying to go back to see how long this building has had no heating because sometimes you're not given the full story. So you have to go and investigate yourself and it can be logged on the system. So now I was back at my chlorifier looking for heat. So I anyway, looked as though I had heat going in, but on the flow, but not much on the return. So I wasn't sure if something had been isolated deliberately, but often engineers aren't in the practice of leaving labels on anything for you to understand what has been shut off. Because I had some valves up here shut off, but I didn't know why they were shut off. There could be something leaking for all I know. So it's not good to open valves and then disappear from a site because you don't know if someone's isolated something for a particular reason. Okay, I got some way goes out. I'm gonna take out some of the wires and then wind this actuator down okay i'm just testing on my actuator where i have voltage so i've got my 24 volt here and then now i was checking my temperature in my gym area because you can't really get up onto the ceiling so i was here using my laser gun to see the temperature on the roof or on the ceiling heaters and i had a 30 celsius on the ceiling heaters then i'm checking the pipe work as well going to that particular area so you can see the heat loss i'm checking other pipe work going through this because i, I want to make sure all the zones are getting hot so i've got like some sort of fan core unit where i've got some a fan running and some pipes running through in this room and the heat is coming through slowly so it's going up in temperature a bit but i've got the temperature up in that part of the building where the where the fan core unit was to about 11 celsius it was zero at the time and a lot of the rooms are close to freezing but people noticed the difference inside this panel had to hit the reset on the overcurrents and then force the pump to open you can see here it had also tripped the breaker on this particular job i have a toilet not flushing so i have to get the panel off and this was a bit of a nightmare trying to get this panel off just trying to get into the panel getting something in and without damaging anything wasn't easy definitely not flushing so after fighting with it i managed to get in and then you can see here the access it wasn't easy getting in but i was just grateful that there was access so it looks like the flush siphon is going to need to be changed on this unit let's have a look inside so it's going to be tricky to get the exact same unit without taking it out just looking to see if there's anything simple what if the pressure wasn't getting to it pressing the buttons and trying to see if 
it's making any difference at all if there's any movement if there's a lost connection some form of blockage but it looks like the flush siphon is knackered sometimes I wonder why things are hidden away in places you'd prefer oh there's the isolation there just there on the left the boiler fix okay in this particular job I have a boiler which is not getting hot enough or should I say a building that's not getting hot enough so I want to adjust the temperature on these I've always had trouble adjusting these EVA maxes but this time I'm gonna win so before I start playing with that let me have a little recce in this plant room to see what's going on so that cage is knackered completely which is a shame and then down here another cage gone just wonder how these break it's as though someone's hitting them or something all right so here's our pumps what look like our constant temperature pumps have a look at our pressure gauge on the left okay one bar and i'm going to check my variable temperature pumps in a moment okay let's work our way around on the pipe work oh that looks like a strainer there and then we have a direction arrow so that looks like the return okay and then up here we've got a lot of actuators and gauges and bellows and flanges there's our siemens actuator it's a bit of a blend of different pumps they're all grumpus from what i can see how are we going to get more heat through this building magna on this vt circuit i like when they put gauges either side of the pump to give you an indication that it's working that is very helpful sometimes you'd wonder if just a, a green light or some form of light to say it's working but i guess that's why you have the bms panel another valve up there looks like a balancing valve or blending valve i can't remember what it's called or actually a bypass it looks like a bypass on the flow and return and then we've got more pipe work up there it's funny because sometimes the people that put the lagging on aren't always sure of the direction of the pipe work sometimes i've seen it wrong this is like some form of brake tank i'm not sure why this this tank is here yeah, some sometimes the directions on the valves don't take it as gospel they can be wrong sometimes because it can be an independent company that do lagging and it may not be correct i've seen lagging go the right wrong direction before okay we've got some sort of booster set here so it's like a cold water booster set and it looks like a sort of like brake tank feeding it and then here you've got the how much bar it is set point and then the pv maybe pressure value or something and then what is this here this looks like some form of siemens actuator on this chlorophyll it's telling me my voltage is there we've got our ton dish there this looks like an unvented cylinder and our different pressures that our PRVs will go off at and that's the hot water service return you've got to remember to look for your D1s and your D2s oh, I've got an expansion vessel here what size is this? It's not 100 litres capacity, I've got two side by side. Okay, then a pressurization unit here. Correct, pressure correct, one bar. Emergency stop button in here. It's good to know where that is. So this is the first time I've been in this plant room. So anytime you're going to a plant for the first time, have a little recce to see where things are. 
So this boiler on the right is isolated. No one's put a label on this boiler to tell me why it's off. There's no cable tie in it. So let's change the set point. So we would have to go into plant and then press OK. Then we go to our settings and then we press OK. Then we go to plant setup. SL1 and then this is where we would change our temperature and then press OK then done remember to hit the done button otherwise it isn't going to acknowledge it and then that's where we change our set point so I'm going to check to see if there's a difference it might take a little while before the temperatures start creeping up okay why is this boiler isolated I may have to have a look inside puzzles me I mean you could get notes from the office and find out but it is quite frustrating when no one leaves a note but looking inside of the general condition it might be a telltale sign why but let me have a look around here so see a PCB up here and two fans What else? I think I saw something earlier around here. What did I see when I was in a little recce? Oh, I saw a gas valve hidden behind here and a condensate trap. Okay, I'm not going to turn that boiler on. I'm not. I'm going to leave it because I have no idea of what could happen when I do turn it on and it's not necessary. That isn't what I've been sent here for. I've been just sent to get them more heat. So they had heat, but I just want to get them more heat. I don't want to completely get rid of the heat by blowing anything unnecessarily so my curiosity is not going to kill the cat this time i'm going to leave that boiler off because i have to go through too many checks too many 26.9 checks on it fags flu air gas and safety devices so i can see my temperature at the boiler creeping up so 81 celsius now set point is 85 it will slowly work its way up to 85 celsius Checking out my gauges of my pumps to make sure that they are there's a difference. Gauge on this pump, one bar. Okay. Pressurization unit said one bar. And then the gauge on after my pump, trying to creep its way up to two bar. My pump, my magnet's telling me that it's operating. So on this pump, one bar, then above, almost two bar. So similar, similar reading. It's nice to have some gauges that are working. Okay. Maybe we should go into the building in a second to see what we get. So in the building, I've got 50, I've got 25 Celsius on this one radio, but on the other day, it was hotter. So maybe the valve is closed on this particular unit. So on some other radiators, I'm getting 54 Celsius. Then I had a system to fix. I'm becoming a plumber again. I tried using a different type of epoxy resin, but it didn't work out for me. I prefer the putty rather than the one you have to make up yourself. So this one that I used, I wasn't really too familiar with it. So maybe it was my problem how I did the mixture. Let me know. I heard someone mention Hippo the other day, a paste. I've never heard of it apart from then. Let me know if you've used one called Hippo before. But Epoxy and LXX are the ones that I tend to use. Let me know what pastes you use or if you use silicone. So Arrowdite. How do you say this? Arrowdite. Yeah, so this is the one I tried using. I asked the shop for a putty, but this is what they gave me. The one you have to mix. Can you imagine you're dealing with a leak and then you have to start doing all this mixture, all this chemistry. Yeah, I didn't like, it was like glue afterwards. I didn't like the way, it, I wanted more of a putty, but this became more of a glue. Maybe it was the mixture I did. Okay, thank you for joining me. Please leave comments in the section below. Thank you for subscribing if you do. Thank you for following the channel. Until next time, bye-bye-bye.